These helpful tips are going to increase the longevity of your roof, or sorry, the lifespan of your roof, as well as prevent further roof damage and mold to your attic and the underside of your roof. These tips will also help prevent any water leaks that could happen in your ceiling if your roof has failed. Well, thank you to my returning subscribers. This channel definitely would not be possible without you guys. So I really appreciate that continuous support. Don't be afraid to share any of the videos that you enjoy uh, with your friends and family so that uh, more people can know about uh, my really good attic insulation tips and uh, walkthroughs. A little recap on attic ventilation. You see these styrofoam vents. These serve as air intake for the attic. So they bring in fresh air from outside and then it gets pulled out from the top vents that you see here. So that creates a uh, airflow within your attic. So in the summer, it brings the hot air, the excess hot air outside, especially due to the fact that most homes have black shingles. And so the radiant heat becomes unbearable in the attic for really hot summer days, going up to um, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. In the winter, it's actually the opposite where some minor, minor heat loss or vapor loss uh, because of little uh, imperfections in the vapor barrier uh, bring vapor into the attic and so that vapor cannot stay in the attic or mold will build up and so that's why ventilation is so important in both uh, extreme seasons. You see here this is the flexible part of the vent. You don't want to crush that too much or else you are going to lose out on your venting. And so when you are putting these sheets of insulation back in to your baffling, you want to have it really soft so that it doesn't crush this flexible portion. Which is also why some people, what they do when they install this is that they flip so that this portion is down here because this is a lot more solid and sturdy than this flexible portion of your styrofoam vents. So the foldable part of the vent uh, can actually be used as a baffle itself and so you don't have to actually put a sheet of insulation to block the uh, loose fill from getting into the soffit. Before you put the more vent, the most important thing to do is to clear everything out of the soffit so that the soffit is free to uh, intake air and bring fresh air into the attic. So having obstructed or insufficient intake ventilation or soffit ventilation within your attic uh, can then create a negative pressure in your attic and therefore outside air would actually be attracted to the roof vents or the top vents. The outside air could actually get into the passive vents, so the short vents, especially when you've got the whirly bird, say in my house going, then intake air could actually be coming through the top vent if you have different types of roof vents. So that's why it's so important, like I said, to have clear soffits and enough soffit area so that the air can easily go into the attic through the soffits where you want them to go and not have the outside air come in through the top of your roof because then you can have potential rain infiltration as well as snow infiltration into your attic and that can ruin your insulation. I'm going to answer a question about ventilation. So some people are asking me how many vents like this do you need? Well, each of these vents are actually half vents um, from uh, the orange corning and so double vents like this provide on the sheet there from Owens Corning, it's 11, let's go with like 11 square inches of ventilation, free ventilation. For each 300 square feet of attic space or from uh, floor, uh, sorry, ceiling area in your house, you need one square foot of ventilation. So that basically equals one square foot of ventilation for intake 
and one square foot of ventilation for the exhaust, which is typically up at the peak of your roof. Because both of them obviously have to be the same, um, or else you're gonna create uh, some pressure differences and that's never good, or you're gonna, your attic is gonna hold moisture, etc. So that's uh, basically the rule of thumb. So you can calculate how many of these more vents that you need in your house. We'll round it up to say 14 um, of these singles here for every 300 square feet. The, here's another kicker though, is if you don't have a vapor barrier down, so this, this house has a vapor barrier obviously, but if, it, if you don't have a vapor barrier, then your ventilation is recommended at double that. So for every 150 square feet of attic space, then you need one square foot of ventilation intake and ventilation exhaust. I wanted to uh, share this crazy house too. Like this house is insane. Like you've got coffered ceilings here and then you got other higher ceilings, flat ceilings that I gotta do. On the other side, I got another huge coffered ceiling. So it's all, uh, all very interesting. So I'm gonna stop it here and gonna keep going with this. extension here and look we actually have a vent here which is rare but that's good because then the air can sort of travel through 